Good afternoon and welcome to Perspective. I'm your host, Kimbrielle Kelly. Today on Perspective, we will talk about something that is not often talked about when people are thinking about starting a family. That's infertility. It affects 6.1 million people in the U.S., according to Fertility Centers of Illinois. But surprisingly, most people are not aware of how common infertility is. We'll talk today to experts to get the facts about infertility, which affects men as much as women. We'll also get a story of one woman and her journey to start a family. But joining us now is Dr. E. Feinberg, who is board certified in obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I feel like when people talk about IVF, they just think it's a procedure where um, a sperm is connected with an egg and then all of a sudden you have a baby. <laughs> but um, but really, it's, it's a much bigger issue uh, these days. You're talking about the health of both men and women. What are some of the common um, misconceptions about infertility? today? Well, I think the most common misperception is that it's just simply age-related. People assume that infertility is just something that affects older patients, but it affects women and men in their 20s and 30s, as well as in their 40s. And with men, what are we really talking about here? Sperm count. <laughs> so we're talking about not only how many sperm they have, but how well the sperm are swimming, and what those sperm look like. That's also a really important component of things. I feel like when people talk about infertility, they're mostly focused on the women. And with men, it's not really, it's kind of a sensitive subject. Right, right. I mean, that's definitely true. The guys are very sensitive about their boys. But really, how do you know if you should get tested? I mean, I know people joke, you know, briefs versus boxers, but I mean, what should you really do if you're thinking about having a family in the future? Right, so just good health habits. So no smoking, minimize your caffeine, minimize your alcohol, and just overall leading a healthy lifestyle can be really important. With regard to when you should be tested, if you've been trying for more than six months and you're over 35, it's time to see a doctor. If you've been trying for a year and you're under 35, that's when it's time to be evaluated. Now, that's something that I thought was interesting because most people say, oh, don't worry about it until you're over 35. Right. But these days, more people are waiting longer and longer before they have children. So that window now is like six months, but your doctor still might be telling you, well, wait a year after, you know, after you've been trying for a year. Right, so the statistics really show show that within six months, 80% of couples should get pregnant, and that's regardless of how old you are. But when you're older than 35, there's just so much less time that you have to spare that it's really important to get tested sooner. Now, there's some really interesting statistics that I didn't know, and you talked about one, which is that one in six couples are pretty much infected by, right. affected by this. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a large number. 12%. I mean, that's 12% of the population, so one in six friends, they're going to be impacted. Right. Men and women experience infertility pretty much equal. Equally, it's right. not a woman, woman's problem anymore. Right. But your fertility, and I think people know this one, is that it declines after 35. Right. Um, so, it, and I think this is interesting because you found some racial um, issues. When you looked at different ethnicities, um, it was impacted equally by people of different races. Right. But what did you find that was different? So we found that in an equal access to care setting, like the military, where health care is free, women who are African-American and Latino weren't coming in to see the doctor as frequently as Caucasian women. So I think there's this big misperception that sometimes people don't come see a specialist because of insurance. It's not really an insurance deal. But I think also what's interesting, this is not really just about trying to get pregnant and have a baby. Right. The infertility, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it's underlying another health issue with a woman. So it, you have to get it addressed whether you're going to have a child or not. Right, and that's particularly true for some things like polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's a syndrome that affects all aspects of a woman's health from her menstrual cycles, her risk of cancer, and even things like sleep apnea. So it's really important to be evaluated, not just for having a baby, but for your overall health. And polycystic ovarian syndrome, <laughs> and I've heard this, PCOS. PCOS. And essentially, for people who may not be familiar, what essentially right. is that? So that's a syndrome where a woman doesn't ovulate regularly and predictably, 
It's thought to be caused by an underlying imbalance in the hormone insulin, and that can cause too much male hormone, testosterone, that causes the other reproductive hormones to be thrown off. So essentially, you're not releasing eggs. You're not ovulating on a regular basis. When you're not releasing eggs or not ovulating, then you can get into a whole slew of other problems like irregular menstrual bleeding, not bleeding, and things like endometrial cancer. Now, one of the things that I have a friend who actually has PCOS, and yeah. I think this was interesting interesting because um, she didn't know and there was no mm -hmm. conclusive test to test for it. Right, right. So it's a syndrome and what a syndrome means is that you have to have certain characteristics that fit into it. So two out of three criteria classify you as PCOS. So irregular periods, clinical signs of too much male hormone, so acne, extra hair growth, and then an ultrasound that shows the appearance of polycystic ovaries. So now that could be one reason that a person couldn't right. get, and obviously you'd have to correct that issue. Right. What are some others? So you can have tubal factor infertility, which means that the fallopian tubes are blocked. The fallopian tubes are the passageway where the egg and the sperm meet up, and so that's a really big cause of infertility. That can be caused by smoking, prior infections like chlamydia, um, or other pelvic infections that people could have gotten. Now I know that there's another person I know of, I'm just outing all my friends here, yeah. but not by <laughs> name. But I think this is very fascinating because she had a very um, pretty standard procedure mm -hmm. to remove fibroids, which is pretty common from what I understand. Mm -hmm. But this procedure created some scarring around her ovaries, which prevented um, one from really working properly. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you see frequently? as well? Right. With any type of surgical procedure, it carries additional risks. And so you always have to weigh the risk of surgery versus the risk of not operating versus the risk of um, subsequent problems that you might have. So now when people actually go to their doctor and they say, mm -hmm. okay, there could be something wrong, right. um, you know, what kind of questions should they ask? Should they push their doctors? Should they go online and do their <laughs> own research, which I know you're probably saying is a bad idea? <laughs> um, I think you have to be careful. So fertility Centers of Illinois has an excellent website that has all of the information that you really need to know, mm -hmm. and that's www.fcionline.com, and it has all the resources that anyone really wants to know about infertility. Great. I think sometimes, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we're going to have to cut you off there, yeah. but I appreciate you being on the show today, and we'll definitely check out this website. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.